We do have most improved teams in free agency so far. Before we get there, I want to jump here blogging the boys, Dan Rogers. We got a C note for you, Cowboys news of the evening. Three biggest deals the Cowboys will hand out this offseason, including one surprise. CD Lamb, no brainer, right? They have all been talking about sure. CD for sure. They call it the pre DAC snack here. Your guy Dan Rogers, Danny Phantom. 24. Osa Odigi Zuwa. That'd be a little bit of a surprise for me, but maybe he's playing at that level. And then uh, does include Dak Prescott here at the end. Five years, $300 million, 240 guaranteed. Says more look like four years and 64 for Osa. I don't know. Did he play that well in the second half of the season? He does have a unique set, set of size and athleticism, so maybe that's a, a good investment to make, Brian. What would you think about that? Kind of plays well for you for about 12 games. And then mm. things kind of, he gets beat up, gets tired, he gets wore down. Maybe the guy next to him is not playing as well. You know, I think he's one of those guys. He could look really, really uh, active at the way he plays, you know, tackles for loss, pass rush, pressures, twist game for about 12, 13 games. And then the second half of that, you're going, is even playing today? You know, so I would, I would be careful because it's happened to him more than once. And then with the DAC thing, I know it would get weird next off season if he was just days away from free agency. Maybe if you're the Cowboys, you don't want to risk that. So maybe that is why you would do the deal now. But uh, it just seems like with their inactivity in free agency, they might be looking at it like the best thing we can do with Dak's contract this year is to eat a bunch of that cash instead of rolling it over because they've already rolled. 40 or 50 million dollars over sure. into the future. I think they're saying with this year, basically, we're not going to spend money on free agents. We're not going to spend any additional money. We're going to use our money this year to pay off the DAC contract that we've been kicking the can on really for what four straight off seasons you've been kicking the can on the DAC contract to give yourself more flexibility in that given year. I think this could easily be the year that you don't. So in that scenario, you wouldn't do the deal until maybe next February or March, trying to get it done before free agency starts. And you probably wouldn't be signing many free agents because you're only $2 million under the cap right now and you still need some mills for your uh, for your draft class. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I, I could see that. I mean, the first one's a lock. The second one is kind of a surprise. Like, would you feel like you want to do Osa early? You let Malik Collins go, and he was a pretty good player. He just got traded to San Francisco. Right. You know, at, at, at some point, one of these guys is going to be good enough that you, you want to lock in with. I just don't know if Osa is the guy I want to let $16 million of my salary cap allocated dollars go to. I think there's been a little bit of a history of trying to get some guys done before, you know, when you look at Steele, when you look at Gallup. I, I'd you be, haven't I, gotten the return on your investment. I'd be careful with this one. I, I just feel like there's been a couple of these seasons where he's played at a very, very high level but not for the whole entire season. And so I would be worried about that. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, I, I like Oates. I think he's a good player, but you're right. And, you know, unfortunately, he is kind of the one of the rare defensive tackles that they have hit on. I think that you've probably nailed it with he hasn't had a lot of help at that position. It hurts. And that's probably, you know, yep. a reason why he's gotten fatigued because yep. he's had to play so many snaps. You were able to rotate him out a little bit more, but he's really the only reliable cog, which is why maybe he's earned an extension. But I would also be very, very cautious about that. You have the most improved teams in free agency so far, Wolchuk? Well, I can tell you it's not the Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys are not improved. They have not done anything but lose players. But we do have the draft to get excited about in April. Are the Giants on the list? The Giants are not. Okay. The Giants are not on the list. Would you say that the you think the Giants have I think improved the Giants, quite a bit? I think the Giants have made some, some nice little moves. I don't think it's anything earth-shattering. But the guys that they let go, I, I, I think they're, you know, and to trade for Burns for a second round pick. The hell of a move. I with, I like with that. Him and Thibodeau rushing the passer, and then you got, you know, Dexter Lawrence inside. That that's a formidable little group there. Their and defensive they, line they've is added good. Now I'm not gonna sit there and act like that uh with Runyon and all that, that they've totally they re -sign, they signed the the tackle from the from the uh from Vegas, who I can't pronounce his last name at all. I need to look. Ooh, it I'd up. have to go back and look and see. Yeah, who that look is. it up. That they signed this tackle from uh, one of the top tackles uh, from the Raiders. 
uh, I always butcher these names as a well-known. Offensive tackle or defensive tackle? Offensive tackle tackle from the Raiders. But, yeah, but I I feel like that the, 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 uh, the Giants have kind of, in a way, kind of put together, you know, added that running back that we all kind of liked. Uh, for, you know, this year. So, yeah, I, I, I kind of feel like that they're in that that kind of situation, a good situation. Yeah, and I think uh, they actually added Jalen Mills, who was on with Sean and RJ, and I think certainly would have been happy to be a Dallas Cowboy. Wow. DeSoto Eagle. I understand why you can't pronounce this dude's name. It's Jermaine e- Illuminor? Oh, Illuminor, yeah. Illuminor, is yes, that how you say James his name? Illuminor. Yeah. Tackle for Jermaine, yeah, Jermaine Illuminor. Illuminor, I wasn't. So they've sure. got two offensive linemen. They added yeah. Devlin Singletary, Singletary, yeah, they, Carter Coughlin at linebacker, Burns, and then Drew Lock. And, Drew, the Lock. Tra- and the, I don't, the, Drew Lock I now said, quarterback competition. There, the Daniel Burns Jones. trade for just a second. They're not going to draft anybody in the second round that's better than Burns. It's no. the same thing when we did it in Philly. We traded for Hugh Douglas. It's a terrible look on the Panthers. They turned down two ones and a second round pick. There you go. In season. Yeah. And then ended Giants up trading just, a second Giants, and a fifth. Giants just gave a second and a fifth for a guy that's going to help their pass rush. And they've still got a second because they traded their defensive tackle to Seattle. There you go. I believe Dexter Lawrence. Uh, so, yeah. They're, or Leonard Williams. Leonard Williams. Who it yeah, was. Yeah. The two of them. So, yeah. They, they, that was a good move for them. Houston, though, is Illuminor, is how you say his name? Illuminor, yeah. Illuminor. I'm sorry. Illuminor. Houston's the most improved team, and, and I would agree with this. that They added Daniil Hunter yesterday. They traded for Joe Mixon. They signed Aziz Alshair, the linebacker oh, okay. that we all really wanted. Here we go. Uh, defensive line, they've got Foley, Fatukasi, Danico Autry that they added, and then they got Jeff Okuda on, on what I think is a pretty team-friendly deal. You know, you, you've got... Some of these crusties that day one of free agency, they're like, it's okay if you sit out. It's all just big money that's being signed. And sometimes it is. We looked at what the commanders did. We think they overpaid for Dorrance Armstrong and Tyler Beyond. You're about to get a text. Well. Be careful. Yeah. I'm glad that they got paid. <laughs> I'm glad that they did. I want those players to make as much money as possible. But there's also deals you can make in the first day, two, or three of free agency, like Zach Moss, like Jeff Okuda. It's not you got to go out and pay $110 million for Christian Wilkins, but you can make some shrewd, smart deals to improve your football team instead yeah. of just sitting out completely and, yeah. again, be one and done in the postseason. I mean, if you want to apologize for this team's inability to understand what needs to happen, you could bring up the fact that usually the top spender in free agency doesn't make the playoffs the following year. And that's because they haven't been drafting well and this, that, and the other thing. And you don't want to be on any of the extremes. No, you don't. You you want to be around the middle. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the Cowboys continue to be on this you know, long, long string of not being able to get it done in the playoffs because their rosters have gaping holes that are getting them whipped, getting them exploited in the biggest matches. Just like Luka Doncic goes up against the Clippers and Zubac has to set the bench. You know, that's the Clippers' flaw. They think they can get it done with Zubac. Mm-hmm. They needed somebody as good as Sabonis. They're like, Zubac, please be better this time around. And Luka is going to bust his ass so bad in the pick and roll that Ty Lue is going to bench Zubac if they face off in the playoffs again for entire games. It's, it's going to happen. The, the, the Cowboys go into these situations, you know, with a lesser roster. And right here in free agency is an opportunity to do something about it. So if you're justifying it like, well, you know, you don't want some of these bums anyway, that's the risk you have to take to get good enough. You have to go into free agency and say, guys, this is a risk. We're not sure this is going to work perfect. Maybe the guy gets hurt, but you have to accept that risk if you want to get to the top. And, you know, when I see people justifying this approach in any way, I think they're a big part of the problem. Yeah, there's no way to justify 28 years now of doing essentially the same thing. And I get it. There were periods where they were very aggressive in free agency, but they stunk at drafting. Now they're very good at drafting. Granted, yes, I get it. Last year, I think, was an outlier. It was not a good draft class. I still think they're one of the best drafting teams, but they don't do anything in free agency. You can't do one and not. That's why you haven't had the success. You've got to find a way to have all three together. And that's how you build a true team. Marcus Simeon was quoted in the article we used earlier. Yeah. Talking about good teams just get better. What have the Cowboys done to get better at all this offseason so far? Nothing. Meanwhile, the rest of the National Football League is, in some ways, trying to improve their team. They are still the only team that has not signed an outside free agent. 
I, I know, man. It's it's brutal. And I, I tell you what, you can look through the last 20 years of the NFL and find two examples of what happens when you try this team-building approach. Number one would be Peyton Manning and the Colts, a team that prided itself on almost every member of that roster most years being drafted by them. Oh, you know, we just this is the way that we do it. And they had Peyton Manning, who may very well have been better than Tom Brady, but they couldn't beat him in the playoffs very often. They end up with one Super Bowl. And then Aaron Rodgers with the Packers, they did a hell of a job. Uh, and managed to pull it off in 2010, and in the years after, decided oh, we really don't want to spend money on big time free agents. And as a result of that, I think Aaron Rodgers was many of those years playing better than Tom Brady, but they were often playoff killed, just like the Cowboys. You know, they sure. get one. So Rodgers and Manning get one. What What do you think lesser quarterbacks are going to do with this team building philosophy, Dad? That's what I'd be saying if I'm Steven. But St- Steven's the one driving this thing. It's it's uh, yeah. very frustrating. I'm amazed to me that Mike McCarthy in his last, maybe last year as the Cowboys coach, has not just stepped up. And maybe he has. I don't know. I'm just kind of. But it doesn't appear to me that he's been gone the last couple of weeks, this team building thing. I mean, I, if I was him, I would be like, you're doing what to me? Yeah. You're not, you're not, you're not giving me a chance here. You're letting all these guys walk out, and you want me to coach this team? You I don't. Know, you're not giving just, me any money to get better. Yeah, this, this not, is, it, it, I would be. I would be at standing at Wilma Clay's door every single day. Like, what are you doing today? What are we doing today? Are we do. Well, you, you're just going to tell me we're going to draft? Yeah. Oh, okay. It puts Might so been much why stress did. to make sure you hit on that draft every and single the year pick. that you don't. Yeah, every single pick that they're making is going to be half. It's we're all in check. It's a need pick. You better get a starter in the pick. first, second, That's a third need round. Yeah. I mean, it kind of does suck for McCarthy that you're being put in this situation, but at the same time, I hope it makes him realize we got to help ourselves and we got to get to work figuring out how teams without great offensive lines still run the ball. Yeah. That's yeah. what Mike's got to be thinking about. See, not I, why is my front office not buying me more players? Well, I mean, they've got me a lot of good players for four years. Sure. But I'm also in a situation where I'm about to get fired if we don't win enough games. Yeah, and I and I to me I would bid I would have been at the combine I would have been, you know, free agents had to be out in the forefront. Like, what can we do? How are we going to do this? Instead, you know, well, we're going to need you to coach. Yeah, him but up. he he's yeah. probably also just understanding that there's nothing he can do. This is you, what you, this you is think, what's going to happen. He, They're not going to get anybody. Okay, you think yeah. he knows that he's going to get fired? Yeah, uh, that, well, I, I think he knows that this is his, his last fate. year. He's yeah. accepted his fate. Is that Bar- what barring a terrific draft, give me a guard center runner, then yeah. maybe we win twelve games again and yeah. I keep it. Yeah. And I and I think he understands that there's no amount of hooting and hollering that he could do banging on their office door Man, every day I, to do something. They're not gonna do it. I yeah. mean the entire fan base and, and media have been doing that for years. And that yeah. is, it's not gonna change the I, way I they do it. I don't want him to get fired because I don't want Mike Zimmer to get fired. I really do like Mike Zimmer. I and hope Mike, Mike Zimmer is your next head coach. I hope Mike Zimmer I hope Mike Zimmer can save his job. I mean, I hope Mike can save Mike's job, you know, and get to, get them where they need to be. It'll be tough. It would be nice to have him around for a while. I like it Mike. Would be. Mike and I get along great. Well, Doug Peterson and Jacksonville is the second most improved team through free agency so far, even though I do think they just lost uh, Calvin Ridley. I don't think Calvin Ridley re-signed there. I think he might be going somewhere else in the AFC. I know the Patriots. Legal gambling state. <laughs> uh, maybe. I think the Titans might have yep. actually just gotten him. Raiders. Uh, and then you, they did bring in Darnell Savage, uh, Mitch Morse at center, Gabe Davis, uh, Devin DuVernay, former Texas wide receiver. Washington is third, and then Atlanta with the addition of Kirk Cousins. Those are the top four most improved teams through free agency thus far. But I really love what Houston's doing. 